Ah, yeah. Hi, Pradya. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, sir. What about you? I'm good too. Thank you. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Uh, yeah, sir. So, so, basically, my name is Pradya Ashte and I'm from Latur. Uh, and I have total 2.6 years of experience in a software testing. Uh, so, uh, my current organization is Coditas. I'm working in Coditas organization and living in Pune. So basically, I have uh, 2.6 years of experience in manual and seven seven months of experience in automation. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So can you tell us something about the automation? Uh, are you working on some automation framework or you just have uh, got learning and uh, knowledge of automation? No, I worked on project. So mm -hmm. basically, in our organization, we are working on BDD framework. Cucumber. Mm. Okay. So, um, so basically, we like uh, in a team, like three to four members uh, build the uh, framework together. Mm. One is senior and uh, three are the juniors. Mm -hmm. So, we build the framework in BDD. So, in that, we use the page object model, test engine, mm. and Cucumber file. Cucumber file. Okay. Okay. So, you were telling about test engine. So, what is test ng? Yeah. Uh, like uh, we are uh, we want to uh, we like uh, we want to pass some things so that we use the test ng dot file. Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to some parameters or like that. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, do you use any test ng annotations? Uh, yeah. In the hooks, we use the at the rate before and at the rate after methods. Mm -hmm. So, which are the different test ng annotations that you are aware of? Uh, at the rate before method, at the rate after method, at the rate before class, after class, uh, before test suit, after test suit, mm -hmm. at the rate test. Okay. So, what is the difference between at the rate before method and at the rate before class? Uh, so, at the rate before method is... Uh, each scenario executed before that method and uh, in uh, before class uh, scenarios will executed before that class particular so, yeah okay so whenever you get this kind of question in an interview so how you need to answer is uh, let me share my screen yeah is the screen visible to you Yes, right. yes. Yeah. So you were mentioning about your framework. You have built the framework. So have you created the framework from scratch? Uh, yes, but in a team we have created. In a team, right. So then you have to explain your contribution. Maybe you helped mm -hmm. the team in uh, integrating reporting mechanism with the framework, right? Or you contributed in uh, creating some of the common methods in the framework right so that's how you can explain your contribution your um you know your i would say what was your achievement or what was your contribution mm -hmm. maybe 20 percent maybe 30 percent because as a team mm -hmm. you are working so someone might be working 20 percent someone might be going for 30 percent right so that's how yes. you have to explain them and in building the framework right so that's very important mm -hmm. yes sir now, the second question was about test ng. So, what is test ng? So, test ng is a popular testing framework for Java that allows user to perform automated testing for web applications, right? Now, mm -hmm. these are the annotations that are available in test ng. So, one is before method. This will be executed before every test annotated method, right? So, whenever you get this question in an interview, what are the different annotations? So, you can explain mm -hmm in a short, in a very summary, one liner explanation. Okay. After method, okay. this will be executed after every test annotated method, right? Before class, before test method execution. Only one time okay. throughout the test case, this will be done. After class, mm -hmm. again, this will be executed after all the test methods in the current class have run. Then before okay. test, this will be executed before the first at the rate test annotated method, right? It can be executed multiple times. Similarly, this method will be executed once the annotation, once all the uh, at the rate test annotated methods complete the execution, 
right so you have to explain these things and then you can also get this kind of difference what is the difference between before method and before test so before method before class i think that was the question i asked yeah, right? so yeah. that's how you can explain then before suit is also there before all the tests in the suit are executed after suit is there before groups after groups so what is the difference those things can be asked to you okay so this is how you have to answer in an interview as well explain in detail right mm -hmm. okay okay now you have an automation framework so mm -hmm. how are different types of testing done with the help of your automation framework so like uh, we have a uh, smoke testing and regression suit okay. we have executed smoke uh, smoke test cases and regression test suit Okay, so how many test cases are there in each smoke and regression? Uh, like in a smoke testing, there will be around 30 to 40, but in a regression, uh, there will be 50 to 60 test cases. Okay. So sometimes it might, uh, sometimes it will be 100. Right, right. So because our project is large. Huh? Large, right. So your project is large. So definitely you will have a set of test cases that you will qualify them as a regression a set of test cases that you will qualify them as a smoke now when you say smoke so 30 to 40 but that's fine when you say regression so you can tell in the range it's 150 okay. to 1 to 200 or up to 300 so it depends on which mm -hmm. are the different features that are going to get released right so based on that you will have the regression testing now tell me how do you run this smoke test suits and how do you run this regression suits so basically we are running manually, manually. like we triggered uh, we triggered the suit mm -hmm. and one by one it will be executed okay okay so in a real time interview you have to explain about cicd integration huh, yes i know cicd but in our organization we are doing manually okay so uh, what do you mean by cicd integration uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment Right. So it what is related to the that? Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Right. So what happens in so that? So we need to create one pipeline. So right. in that uh, DevOps or some developers will uh, hit or trigger uh, some events. At that time, uh, all the test cases will be executed all one by one, hmm. like that. Okay. okay. And anything Correct else? me if I am wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll tell you about the answer. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. anything you would like to add? Mm. No, sir. I know only about this. Okay. So if you get this question in a real-time interview about CICD pipeline, right? So let me explain it to you. Mm. So is my paint window dis uh, displayed to you? Uh, yes, sir. Visible. Uh, visible. Okay. You are able. Okay. It's visible. Okay. So in CICD pipeline, what happens is you will have different stages. Okay irrespective mm -hmm. of the size, the uh, stages will be there, right? So let mm -hmm. me explain you these things. Right, so in the first stage, what would happen is the VM would be launched, right? This okay. is a particular dedicated VM for running the automation. It can be uh, on the cloud, right? And it will be launched and it will be launched with the resources also so let's say if you want a chrome browser or if you want firefox browser based on execution so that browsers will also get installed in that vm okay this machine okay. will be created on the fly so this is very important you have to tell in an interview this machine would be created on the fly this is not something that is already up and running it is it is uh, created on demand basis you have a demand of running your automation so this will run this will be generated okay then second is your test or you can say your scripts would get downloaded from the uh, maybe git or whichever svn version control that you are using so from that url your test or scripts will get downloaded in some c drive folder in this machine itself okay then what would happen uh, once that is done the application on which your automation needs to be run so maybe the release needs to be happened that will be launched 
or you can say if it's a desktop based application it will be installed okay then your automation test will run so your test execution will happen this is all automated way huh so your test execution will get triggered right and you will have some pass fail results okay maybe out of yeah. uh, let's say 100 test uh, let's say 90 got passed okay and 10 got failed next in the last stage what would happen these results will get email so so these results will be emailed to you and your qa team and if you okay. have incorporated dev team to them as well or to stakeholders to whichever parties you want this emails that those things will be going okay these are the five stages now in some companies you will also have six stage in which what would happen is the 10 results that 10 test cases that got failed right those 10 test mm -hmm. cases would be created as a defect in jira or defect management tool whichever you are using okay okay so this is a process that will work so from this to here it's the first this is stage one stage two then stage three then uh, stage four right so ignore my drawings here so uh, but you are able to understand how you have to explain right? yeah, yeah. and this is something that is um okay this is something that is uh you know not mandatory it depends on your framework to framework but this this process that i had just showed you know this is important this thing okay this thing you have to explain in an interview cicd and even if you have not integrated it so you can install this jenkins in your machine it would hardly take uh, 15 minutes and you can set it up you can create one pipeline like this and you can see how it is okay. working. I'm not telling you to run all your tests. Just create one batch file and see how the execution is happening. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that's how you can use this uh, CICD. Okay. Now. Okay. So let me share my screen. This is a scenario based question. Okay. Hmm. There is a web application. Okay. This is a manual testing question. You don't have to confuse with automation. This is a web application in which you are testing. So there is a date picker, which has a start date and end date. And once you select both the dates, you select start date, you select end date. Okay. And then those two dates will be, <clears throat> sorry, will be displayed in another two web pages. Okay. Okay. Now, once you modify, they get modified in another two web pages. So can you tell me what are the high level test scenarios? How will you test this? Okay, uh, I will uh, read once and then tell you. Yeah, yeah, you can take your time to think. Okay. Are you able to see the notepad screen? Yes, yes. Okay. So firstly, uh, we are able to click on the uh, start date, date picker and end date, date picker. Mm -hmm. And uh, start date and end date should be in present or the future date. We can't select, uh, can't select the past dates. So how are you assuming that it will? It should be present or future date? Uh, like. Uh, I'm assuming from today onwards. 
Mm -hmm. So see, being a QA, you don't have to assume anything. If you get such kind of question, mm -hmm. you can ask the interviewer mm -hmm. in a polite way that, sir, could you please help mm -hmm. me or ma'am, could you please help me with some more requirement? Can I select past date? Can I select present date? Or is it just uh, functionality working for future date only? The moment you assume something, okay. that means mm -hmm. the bugs will be triggered. Okay. In, in real time also, see, you have 2.6 mm -hmm. years of experience in real time also. If mm -hmm. you get anything to test, definitely you will have some questions until unless it's yeah. a straightforward user story, which tells just click on this button and you get the output, right? Yeah. So you will have the questions and make that thing work in an interview. Get those things in, you know, in the discussion mode in an interview. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I uh, now mm -hmm. let's say you I'm assuming that you asked me a question that sir can we select past date? So I'm telling no, we cannot select past date. We cannot select the present date. We can only select the future date up to December thirty first, two thousand twenty four. That is the requirement. Now, what are the test scenarios that are coming to your mind? Okay, so a start date and end date should be future date first scenarios. Mm -hmm. and uh, 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 user is able to see the dates whatever dates uh, they have selected correct able date to see the date okay correct dates which which whichever they have selected okay okay what okay. else and uh, Uh, user is able to see the DDMM YY or YY DDMM format date. Mm -hmm. So this is again requirement question. What is the format of the date? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, then uh, mm -hmm. you know, one test case you can also add that in requirement it is written DDMM YY format, but it is accepting D slash M M slash YY Y format. So is that fine? Yeah. Let's say in the requirement, let's say you ask me a question and I told you, yeah. what is the format but, of the data? Yeah, so, yeah, but it is accepting this. Is it fine? It, should it accept the system date or not? Or or should it, uh, what should happen, uh, you know, if I try to select some future date after six months, what should happen if I try to select the future date of leap year or not a leap year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you select the date, start date and end date, then if you just click on refresh, are the dates remaining there or they are getting refreshed? If you select start yeah. date and end date, but if you update end date, then the end date should get modified to another two web pages. If you update both yeah. the dates, then both the dates should get modified in another two pages. If you keep end date same, just update the start date. Then it should get modified in another two web pages. Yeah, and we have to check the browser compatibility here also. Like, it is, is it working on Chrome or Firefox? Because in our organization, sometimes it is working on Chrome, but it is not working on Firefox and Safari. Oh, okay. So, browser compatibility. Mm. Correct, correct. Um, what else? Um, uh, the selected dates uh, will be displayed in the uh, two different web pages. Selected date. Yeah, yeah. So that I covered, no? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other test scenario that is coming to your mind? Uh, Uh, no, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So I think we are good. Generally, you know, these kind of questions will trigger what is the curiosity level that you have for understanding the requirements. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was the another scenarios for that? Can you tell me? Yeah, yeah. So these, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, if you select mm -hmm. end date and you update it, but you don't change the start date. 
right then you have to okay. verify mm -hmm. on another another two web pages also whether one of the dates get modified if both of the dates mm -hmm. are updated then if both the dates are modified right mm -hmm. and after refreshing right. the updated date should be updated right right then you can also test the concurrent testing scenario for example you are updating the date from one of the browser and then you check from the other browser if that is modified or not or you update the okay. date from one of the user and you check with the other user whether that date is getting updated or not so concurrent testing okay. right so that's how you yeah. can do mm, yeah so i think that's fine now let us see other questions Okay. Do you have idea about uh, data driven framework? Mm, I know only about the data driven framework, but uh, I should not work. I will. I am not working on the data driven. I worked on BDD framework. BDD framework. Okay. So, which are the keywords that you will have in the BDD framework? So basically, uh, the structure of the BDD framework is uh, we have a feature file. Mm -hmm. Uh, one page object model, pages, page object model. We are using the page object model for the uh, maintenance and uh, code uh, optimized code. Mm -hmm. Because if in our uh, uh, website or in our web page, uh, we have in a, suppose uh, on a login page we want to want to change some modification. So in that time, if we are uh, like using page object model, so it is structured and we will go that page and uh, change the code so it is easy for the tester mm -hmm. so where do you write the code so uh, in a uh, in a feature file mm -hmm. there is like give uh, given when then keywords mm -hmm. so we are uh, writing the test cases in the cucumber file in a plain english text given when then so we have one step definitions in a step definition, so we are uh, implementing our logic there. And in a page object model, so we have to uh, write the uh, methods. And in a step definition, we uh, call that methods. Uh, and we have a test runner mm -hmm. to run the uh, test scripts. You have test runner. Test runner and hooks. Hooks, OK. Uh, and in a hook, so we have like uh, at the rate before and at the rate after methods. So these uh, uh, will run before the uh, test suit and after the test method, test scenarios. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many scenarios mm -hmm. you are writing in your feature file? So we can write uh, as much as we have. Like uh, in a feature file, uh, login functionality is there. So uh, I will write uh, uh, so many scenarios in a login page. Suppose log valid login, invalid login, blank login. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so can you create a feature file? And how would you write mm -hmm. those keywords of login? You're telling no valid login, invalid login. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So I'm um, giving you screen sharing, right? So you can click on share screen button. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will open the IntelliJ. Yeah, yeah. Whichever you are comfortable with, IntelliJ or Notepad Plus Plus. Uh, how to just click on share screen button the green color button okay. <coughs> uh, is my screen visible sir yes yes zoom is visible yeah okay yeah yeah uh, so uh i created one Mm -hmm. Like a dummy uh, mm -hmm. URL. I am practicing okay. Orange HRM. Okay, okay. Yeah, so let's uh, so, create a feature file for login. 
Yeah, this is a step okay. definition file. Yeah, let's create a feature file for login. Yeah, can you create a new? Okay. Yeah, new. Yeah, can you create new a, feature file? Okay. Yeah, new feature file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now create, oh. uh, yeah, write the keywords. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scenario. So, login. So, like uh, I have created one feature file. So, we need to create a, a step definition of that uh, uh, all steps. Mm -hmm. No, no, you don't have to create the step definition. Just mention the feature file. Now, let's say if you have to enter ID and password, then how will you enter mm -hmm. them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, firstly, I will inspect the, like, suppose there is Facebook page. So, I will inspect the... Uh, Facebook page, open the Facebook page and inspect on the username mm. and uh, find out the uh, XPath of that particular uh, element. Mm. Uh, firstly, I will launch the driver using the driver.get. Mm. Uh, so, like we can either hard coded, like hard coded entering uh, the URLs, mm. uh, or another way is like we have one config file. Mm. dot properties so the code that's will be optimized right right that's fine you have config file but then how will you enter those things in this feature file um, so in a page object model i will uh, find out the elements or uh, locators of that particular web page and create one method in the page object model uh, and uh, we we uh, I will create a, a step definition in the uh, step definition file and call that page object uh, whatever the methods we have created in the page object model in page definition we will call that method. Okay. Anything else that? So pre. Um, no sir like i'm currently doing same like i have one i will show you uh, i have one created for the origin yeah, yeah that's that's fine that's fine so let me share okay, my screen uh -huh. yeah yeah uh, so I'll, I'll explain you in short okay so let's say if you get this kind of question in an interview is my screen okay. visible yes right so uh here I have taken one feature of uh, I'm trying to automate to log in on BBC website and verify search. Okay, so okay. here mm -hmm. I'll open the Firefox browser. I'll navigate to that particular website and I click on search text box. Then I have to enter different countries in the search text box for that search to work. So countries parameters I need to add. So India, Japan, China. So these are the parameterization that I have done in the feature file itself. So this is what your feature file would look. Now, let's say for your case, it is, uh, for example, uh, username is there. Then uh, you have to log in, right? So you end, uh, enter password. So accordingly, these parameters okay, you have to write. Okay, need to create the outline scenarios. Right, what right. you are trying to say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Hi, yeah, sir. I have created for the invalid scenarios. Invalid, right? So valid, mm. invalid. So so again examples will get modified as per the parameters two parameters now you have earlier i showed you with one yes. parameter then two parameters mm -hmm. will come so you don't have to worry about step definition file or runner file this is how mm -hmm. your code will yeah, look. yeah got it yeah 
from the cucumber itself. Yeah, so you have to parameterize in your interviews and you have to explain them. So they'll get an idea of okay. having an idea of parameterization also. Mm. Okay. Yeah. What is data data provider? So data provider, uh, we are using at the rate data provider annotation mm. for the parallel execution. Like uh, we want to run the uh, certain scenarios in a parallel parallelly. Mm -hmm. So in a data provider, we can set parallel is equal to true false. It is a data provider parameterization. Okay. Can you write the syntax for or code for data provider? How will you write it using okay. test ng? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, data at the rate data provider is equal mm -hmm. data at the rate data provider in a packet parallel is equal to true mm -hmm. or false true or false okay okay so see uh, that's how you can explain in an interview at the rate data provider name and a two two dimensional array huh? yeah then public object what is your dp method data provider method name what object it will return which values you have mm -hmm. Right, so that's how you can explain in an interview. Okay. 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 Which are the different agile ceremonies that you are a part of? Oh, agile like Scrum. Okay. So, what is so, the difference between agile and Scrum? Uh, agile is a methodology, and Scrum is a part of the agile methodology. Mm. So, in a Scrum. Like uh, in our organization, there is one uh, daily scrum call. So in that, we have to tell what uh, yesterday we have did. Uh, so uh, 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 like uh, today, what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So all we need to give the updates to the scrum master. Okay. So let's say if you get this question in an interview, which are the different agile ceremonies that you are a part of? So you have to explain them. So first of all, your day starts with a sync up call in which uh, or you can say stand up call it's a 15 minutes mm -hmm. or 10 minutes call and you will share on what task you are working on what are your updates if you have any challenges or any impediments for that task so that is the first sync up call then you will have a uh, grooming meetings in which the requirements will be discussed yeah. with you then you will have a uh, retro yeah retro uh, is once in a two weeks or once in a month yeah, yeah. And yeah, even retros are a part of meetings in which you will discuss what went well, what did not went well, what could have been improved. Right? Yeah. Then uh, sprint backlog. Right? Uh, then uh, defect rising meetings. So these all are the calls or these all are the meetings that you are a part of in the okay. agile ceremonies. Okay. Okay, Pragya, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, yeah, sir. No, in which area I will need to do work? Yeah, so see, uh, you have got, uh, I mean, you have got some hands-on experience on automation, seven to eight months. So now you mm -hmm. have to practice how to explain those things in an interview. Right? Okay. Because mm -hmm. now mostly questions would be on automation. Yeah. As you have manual plus automation experience, so they will ask you on questions on automation. automation. Right? So be prepared for automation things. Okay. okay. Then how to explain such kind of things like frameworks or how, what is CICD, Jenkins. Even oh. if you haven't worked, learn those things. Those are very important things. Those will be asked to be done. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. So be prepared with those things. Rest all looks good. Right. Uh, thank you so much for coming today and wish you all the best for your career ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity yeah. because definitely it will be uh, beneficial for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Bye. bye.